Today we're talking about the life cycle of the penis. <laughs> the very center of male sexual health. We have created this special timeline behind me to show you exactly how the penis ages as the male ages. His penis and its life cycle is a barometer to his overall health. Understanding this cycle could help save your sex life and protect his health. It's the ultimate symbol of your man's virility and masculinity, the penis. But this organ is also a barometer of a man's health. And the harsh reality, as a man ages, so does his penis. In his 20s, your man is at his sexual peak. His sex drive is high, and he needs little stimulation to become erect. But as he moves into middle age, his testosterone levels begin to drop, and his penis loses sensitivity, making it harder to have an erection and reach orgasm. And if he gains weight, develops diabetes, or vascular disease, the risk for erectile dysfunction increases. Nearly half of all men over 40 have a problem maintaining an erection. Nearly three out of four men over 70 struggle with impotence. But the good news is, some of the biggest health threats to the penis can actually be avoided with a healthier lifestyle. I've got the secrets to extend the life cycle of the penis. All right, we have a group of men ready for answers. Welcome to the show. And people at home should be taking notes as well. So let me ask you a question. How many of you are confident that you know what you need to know about your penis? They all are. <laughs> Typical male experience. You're often air, never in doubt. All right? So guys, this is your life. And we're going to go through all of it today. I'm going to take you from age 17 to age 60 and beyond. And here to help me look at the penis through your lifetime is urologist and author of Size Matters, Dr. Harry Fish. Yeah. Let's start off with these strong guys behind us. What is the biggest misperception about the penis in your practice? You know, men think the penis is maintenance free. Let's face it. You know, men take their cars in for tune ups, oil changes. But when it comes to the penis, they need to know at every age we have to take care of it and do something about it and avoid some of the pitfalls, if you will. So let's get you acquainted with the organ that we are talking about. I need a volunteer. Amy, where's Amy? Amy, come on up. Welcome, Dr. Fish. Hi. Jamie, here's some gloves for you. Is your husband behind us over there? Yes, he is. Where is right he? There, there he is. Okay. There's your, there's your girl. <laughs> I hope you say that after we're done. <laughs> so, Amy, I don't, does, this, uh, does this look familiar to you? It doesn't look familiar no, to doesn't. me. No, not that. This is, yeah, this is not what it looks like normally, but this okay. is what a cadaveric penis looks like. And I use it for one specific reason. Go ahead and you can sort of appreciate the fact that it's got some cold. Yeah, cold. Very cold, yeah. yeah. Not what you want to be dealing with normally. No. But <laughs> if you look in the end here, you can sort of see that there's some soft area, sort of a spongy area yes. with an outer casing. Yes. And that's important. There's the urethra there. That's where the urine comes through and the semen comes through. This area here is spongy and it can get very hard and engorged during erections and it stays flaccid when that's not happening. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about this anatomy today. So we'll start off with this basic external appearance, but I've got a lot of other ways of making this come alive okay, for you. Okay, great. Does that work? Yes, of course. Perfectly. <laughs> right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Appreciate it. So let's start at the beginning of the timeline with the penis at age 17. This is when your penis is at the height of arousal and recovery. And maybe I can just use a very high-tech way of demonstrating this, if you don't mind. Sometimes... <laughs> This may look familiar. So, you know, you're 17, you're aroused, you're stimulated, and then, we, oh, yeah. it pops, right? That's not unique. And now you've ejaculated, but what's amazing, not that you did it once, but that without too much stim stimulation again, all of a sudden you're back into it and you'll go again. So that ability to repeatedly ejaculate with very little stimulation, not a ton of arousal, is what we're talking about being unique, especially when you're very young. Now, Harry, why is that? Blood flow, blood flow, blood flow. We talk about it all the time. At 17, the blood flow is maximum it could be. And let's face it, when you're 17, the wind blows you get an erection, right? Just like this. 